What's up guys, I'm Puli from Programmers and welcome back to this series on JavaScript. In the last few videos, we learned about Boolean expressions and comparison operators. We also learned that these Boolean expressions evaluate to either true or false. In this video, we will learn about if-else statements to perform different actions under different conditions. If the condition is true, we will do one set of tasks and if the condition is false, we will do another set of tasks. This is called decision making in programming. Now let's see how we can implement decision making in JavaScript. The if statement is used to make decisions in programming. Let's start by looking at its syntax. The if statement starts with the if keyword followed by the test condition inside parenthesis. This test condition is a boolean expression that results in either true or false. If the test condition is true, then the code inside the body of the if is executed. However, if the test condition is false, the body of the if statement is skipped from execution. Let me give you a more practical example to drive home the idea. Suppose you're a university student and to pass the examination, you need to score 50 or more. Let's try to implement this in our program. I'll remove this old code and let me start by creating a variable that will store the mark that you entered. So I can say const score equals prompt enter your marks now i need to wrap it inside parseint because i need it in number format so parseint all right then i'll use the if statement with the test condition to check whether marks is greater than or equal to 50 so on the next line i'll say if score greater than equals 50 and if this test condition is true, I want to print the you have passed your exams message. So let me create a block and inside I'll say console log you have, you have passed the exam. Let me put a congratulations message as well. So I can say congratulations. Let me run this program and I'll put something like 80. And you can see that you have passed the exam and congratulations are printed on the screen. Here the value of the score is 80 which is greater than 50. So the test condition score greater than or equal to 50 is true and that is why these two statements were executed and that is why these two lines were printed to the screen. Let me run this program again but this time I'll enter something like 40. And when I press enter you can see that nothing happened. So let's see what happened here. When I entered 40, this check was false and that's why these two statements were skipped and since this is the end of the program, nothing was printed to the screen. Now it would have been better if you could print some message like sorry you failed your exam in this case. So what I'll do is I'll add another if statement. I'll say if score less than 50 and then I can say console.log sorry you failed your exam. Now this time when I press run and enter 40, you can see that sorry you failed your exam was printed. This is because although the first condition score greater than or equals to 50 was false and these two statements were not executed, the control of the program then passed on to the second if which says score less than 50. Since this is true, this statement is executed and we see that on the output. If you're enjoying this video, please also check out Program is Pro where we provide tutorials along with quizzes and challenges which will help you practice and test your learning in real time. Also the course includes projects to give you an awesome experience of how programming works in the real world. And for our YouTube subscribers, we are giving 50% off on the yearly plan. Sign up by scanning this QR code or use the link in the video description to claim your discount. I have this code from our last section. I'll remove the code of user input and assign a score with a hard coded value so that it's easier to focus on the logic of the if statement. So let me remove this parse int and prompt and I'll just put something like 40 here. In this program, we have used two different if statements to perform two different tasks. We know the student passes the exam if the score is higher than or equal to 50, which you can see in the first if statement. Similarly, if the score is below 50, the student fails the exam which we can see in the second if statement. Here, we are absolutely sure that only one of the if statements will be true. In such cases, 
Instead of writing the second if statement with a condition, we can use the else clause. Let's first look at the syntax of the if statement with else clause. What happens here is that if our test condition is true, these statements inside the if block are executed. And if it's false, by default, the code inside the else block is executed. Now getting back to our code to print whether the student passed or failed the exam. I'll now remove the second if statement. Instead, I'll use an else clause. So here, I'll remove this else is if, I'll put else and the condition here is not needed now. Let me read this code in plain English. If the score is greater than or equal to 50, then print or console log, you have passed the exam and congratulations. Else print, sorry, you failed your exam. The else clause catches anything that's not covered in the if condition. Now when I run this code, as you can see, sorry you failed your exam is printed to the screen. The if statement with the else clause allows us to make a choice from two different options. However, sometimes we need to make a choice from more than two options. In those cases, we can use the else if clause with the test condition. Let's see its syntax first. The if statement checks the condition inside the first if. If it's true, the body of the if statement is executed and statement 2 and statement 3 are skipped. However, if the first test condition is false, the control of the program jumps to the second if condition and if this is true, then statements 2 is executed and statement 3 and statement 1 are not executed. If both of these are false, then statements 3 or the body of the else statement is executed. If necessary, we can also add more else if conditions like this. So I can add one more or even 10 more and it will work the same way. Now that we know how the else if clause works, let's get back to our code to check whether a student passed or failed the exam. Here, this score variable stores the marks obtained by the student. So it shouldn't be greater than 100 or a negative number. However, in our program, if the score is greater than 100, say 120, our test condition of score greater than or equal to 50 becomes true. Hence, you have passed your exam and congratulations will be printed even though the score is invalid logically. And if the score is a negative number, sorry you have failed your exam is printed because our test condition is false. Again, the score shouldn't be less than zero. We need to fix this. We can fix this by adding a condition to check if the score is valid or not at the beginning. Only then we will check if the student passed or failed the exam. So let me change the code. Here, I'll add two conditions. I can say if score greater than 100, then console log score is invalid. Similarly, I can do else if score less than zero, console.log score is invalid. I will turn this if into an else if and this should do the trick for me. This time when I press run, it says sorry you failed the exam but now let me try with the other values. So I'll say 120 and it tells me that the score is invalid. Similarly, let me try something like minus 10 and when I press run, it says score is invalid. Okay guys, we need your support to keep this kind of content free for all users. YouTube really likes engagement on the video. So leave a comment below, press that like button and hit subscribe if you haven't already. Let's get the engagement score high up so that more people can discover and enjoy these courses. In the last program, we can see that the two conditions, score greater than 100 and score less than zero, do almost the same task that is printing that the score is invalid in that case. In such cases, we can combine both the conditions together using a logical operator. Here, the score is invalid if it is either less than zero or greater than 100, so we can use the logical or operator. Let me modify this code so I can remove this else if. First, let me copy paste this and use the logical op or operator here with score less than zero. And now I can remove this else if. Here, this condition is true if either of score greater than 100 is true or score less than zero is true. Both are the cases for which the score is invalid. So this is printed. Let me run the program. And you can see that it works as before. So for both the invalid cases, 
a single boolean expression does the work before we end this video here's a little tip if the body of if or else if or else has only one statement we can omit the curly braces in our programs so in case of the program you see on my screen i can remove these curly braces and press run and my program still works as you've seen in this video the syntax of the if statement is pretty simple the harder part is the logic behind the test conditions but you will get better at creating test conditions with practice so don't worry also be sure to check our video on comparison and logical operators that are used to create these test conditions the link will be in the description below we have covered a lot in this video it's time for you to practice what we learned here is one programming challenge for you to solve can you create a program to check whether a number is positive or negative or zero to create this program create a variable named number and assign a value to it based on the user input then using an if statement check if the number variable is positive or negative or zero if the number is positive print the number is positive if the number is negative print the number is negative and if the number is zero print the number is zero you will find the answer to this question in our github repository now we've covered almost all the essentials of if else but there's also a nested if else statement which we haven't covered in this video if you want to learn about them you can visit our site programis.com the link will be in the description below now that we have reached the end of this video it's time for the programis quiz what is the output of the following code comment the answer below happy programming